You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today, man, we have another amazing show for y'all. Man, if y'all are ready for another person who's in the podcast world and doing big things, we have Jennifer and her brand, Jennifer Pilates, and she does amazing things. She has a service, she has a brand, but most importantly, she has a story, and it's all about empowerment. So first and foremost, I want to welcome Jennifer to the show. How are you doing? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so honored to be a part of your show. Man, I appreciate you being on. This show is going to be great because you're a podcaster too. So you know how this works. This is, this is going to be fun. When you started your whole journey being a celebrity mindset coach and trainer, uh, kind of give us a backstory. What first inspired you to get into this and how did you find yourself in this opportunity? Yeah. So, um, Great question. (laughs) Back in the day in uh, 1997, I was in a pretty traumatic car accident. I had been climbing the corporate ladder, had all my ducks in a row, had my life planned out. And, you know, I really think that God said, okay, it's time. It's time to really get her on track because she thinks she's been on track, but apparently I hadn't been. And uh, through the car accident, I no longer, the short story is that I could no longer participate in my job in the corporate world and offered myself up to be laid off when there were transitions coming because I was in and out of doctor's offices for eight hours a day, seeing you name the doctor. I saw it. I was out in Boulder, Colorado. So it was fabulous being in the Mecca in that time of the wellness industry. So I experienced things I had never, ever experienced before. And I learned so much. And that's really when the world of holistic wellness embraced me and I embraced it. And my eyes were open to an entirely different world, which is how I found Pilates. And it was through Pilates then that my coaching expanded, my intuitive abilities and as an empath expanded, and my whole world just opened up. And I was able and have been able to help people body, mind, and spirit for over 20 years now. And so a Pilates session often turned into a coaching session. And you don't usually see a coaching session turn into a Pilates session, I'll say. But generally, everyone goes back and forth between the services with me because there's this beautiful link between body, mind, and spirit. And all of these years later in the business, you know, my specialty is very much rehabilitative care. It's very much mindset. And my mission has always been to help clients discover their own truths, to gain self-empowerment, and in turn, transform their lives, body, mind, and spirit. And the key word is that they're transforming their lives. I'm blessed to be along for the journey through my toolbox that I'm able to help with them. And the key is that we're always going deep into the subconscious realm to find those areas of blocks, to release those and then move forward and allow their lives to be transformed and allow them to feel empowered. And it really spans all areas. So it's, I'm so blessed and so grateful for the car accident that really brought me into this incredible journey. And here I am, you know, like I said, 20 plus years still doing it, which is great. And now adding on the podcast, of course, which has been really fun too. When you are this person building your own brand, you're being your own boss, you're being your own entrepreneur. I mean, nowadays that seems to be like the go-to thing you see on social media, you see posts after posts, you see posters, you see all these quotes and everything, but you are in the midst of it. You're actually living this lifestyle. You're not just talking about it. You have your brand, you have your community, you, you have your responsibilities day in, day out. What has the process has been like for you becoming responsible to be your own boss and wear all these different hats? Oh, another great question. Yeah. You know, becoming an entrepreneur was ironically something when I was very young as a child, I knew I wanted to be, but at that time I didn't know what that word meant. 
I grew up in a military family. I grew up where people, if you weren't in the military, you worked a nine to five job. So I, I didn't really know what entrepreneurship was, but I knew I always wanted to have my own at that time. It was my own clothing store, which I have since done. I've had a clothing line and, and I accomplished that, that goal later in life. And what I learned and, you know, stumbling through the, through the years is, so many amazing things. I mean, from the legality side and the back end to the front end, which is so important. And for me, it's all about serving and how can I show up and how can I serve someone today? And how can I show up and make this world a better place? And I've always wanted to do it on a larger realm and a larger realm with the idea of serving people around the world in lots of different countries, which is then how fast forward that the podcast became um, and became a part of the uh, the brand and the company as well. But, you know, those behind the scenes, I will say it's super important as an entrepreneur to have support and to have mentors and to have coaches because it can be a lonely world as you're diving in. And it is really important to have all of your knowledge in place when you are beginning a business, you know, from the legality aspect to, are you going to have a business checking account? Are you going to have a business credit card? You know, all those, you can really go into those finite things. And I say, I would want someone to really look at what lights you up and what feels good. And that is where you hone in within your business. And so for me, I like to have other people on hand to go, okay, guide me through this legal process because that's your forte. It's not mine. And I think that when you can step out of ego and go, yeah, I want help. Like, you know, I'm a coach, but a coach should have a coach. I have a coach. I have healers that I work with. I, you know, that to me is so important. You want to have that support unit around you so that you don't feel like you're on this island by yourself, which sometimes it feels that way as an entrepreneur. So it's super important to have those networks that you can rely on and that can help hold you you up on the days when you really need it. A lot of times we can be in that situation where we feel like uh, I need help, but I don't want to get help because I don't want people to think I'm weak or think I don't know what I'm doing. Or it's all these different thoughts that will try to enter our minds. And over the years, how did you overcome those dark spots where you had your doubts or you you just weren't sure that things will work out. How were you able to battle that and, and just make it through those seasons? Yeah. I would say that I am the entrepreneur who does not start with a business plan. I do not start with a finite tools. I go for it. For instance, when I opened up my very first Pilates studio, I didn't think what if, I don't have clients and I won't make the bills. To be be honest, that was never, ever a thought in my mind. I just knew this is what I wanted to do. I was going to be able to help people and serve people. And I went forth with it. So it's a mindset and it's being able, again, to get to the subconscious levels, to really work on yourself, to be able to step into fear not allowing it to control you and turn it into excitement if you can, which I know some people are going, oh my gosh, is she crazy? Um, But no, it's saying, okay, like that might be a little scary and fear sits beside me, but you're going for the ride with me. I control the ride. And so there has never been a time and I've had numerous Pilates studios, I think over seven at this point, never once have I ever gone, "Well, well, geez, what if no one shows up? What if I don't make any money? That has never, so I've never had that, that fear in my mindset. I've had different fears of, oh my gosh, what if I can't help someone because I want to always go above and beyond. And, and again, that always goes back to having faith and knowing I'm given the tools, body, mind, and spirit to help transform someone's body by helping empower them. And whatever their journey is, that's how it's going to play out. And that's how the universe will have it play out. So when you, again, it's, it's, it's really stepping out of your ego and being in flow and being in flow with the universe. When we try to control things, I know for me, like that never works out well. It never bodes well when I'm trying to really fine, fine tune and, and finite, hold on to everything so tight when I can go with the flow. And even when that feels uncomfortable and I have to trust, trust in what I can't see 
that's when I find the beautiful magic happens. This is uh, Focus Radio talking to our guest, Jennifer Pilates. And man, I mean, is as if you weren't that busy. You know, you have seven studios, but you find time to to do a podcast yourself, empowered within with Jennifer Pilates. I mean, what's the secret sauce? How you have time to to do shows and and help people even further by having a platform for them to to learn from mm-hmm. you guys. You know, the key is being in alignment and the key is working on myself and taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. And when I'm in alignment, then everything else falls into place. When I am out of balance and I'm, you know, really, if I get out of flow and I start hustling and you know what that means, mm-hmm. generally it, things don't work out for me. And I take time and take steps back. Like right now, I'm actually behind the scenes, really reworking a website, reworking which social media platforms I want to be on because I can see changes and I know where my efforts and where my community is changing to. That's good. So there's always trying to stay a step ahead. Again, going with the flow and not fighting it, right? If something isn't working, you got to change it up. You have to be able to, I always say, take that road where maybe no one else has been before, but if you're being led down it, go for it. That might be where your rainbow ends. Man. And you have to be That's willing, cool. right? You have to be willing to walk the road by yourself. You've got to be so in love with yourself, so trusting of yourself, your own best friend, your own cheerleader, that you're fine on that road alone. You know, that trust, You've got to have that trust to be able to, to do that. And so, yeah, I mean, it definitely is challenging right now. I've switched and everything is virtual for me. So the Pilates training is virtual. My coaching, the podcast is virtual. And that I was guided to about seven years ago. I just had this, this vision of, okay, I need to be hundred percent virtual. And it was a blessing because what happened a few more years later, right? Everything shut down. So I was already a few steps ahead. And so that's when I say when you're able to heed those intuitive moments and heed those gut instincts, that's when you know you're in flow. And it's scary sometimes. Sure, you don't always understand it, but we don't always have to understand it. We just have to be willing to trust the process and the journey. And you spoke of uh, virtual, and that's a word that I think everyone found out what that was in 2020. Uh, if you didn't hear about that word, that was part used throughout the day, every day. So in this right now, they're asking, all right, what benefits have you seen so far? Just being able to be virtual because mm-hmm. it's one thing we in person, but how mm-hmm. has it helped your business? Sure. Certainly. Well, I'll tell you, and and you'll get a good chuckle out of the story. So about, gosh, I think it was about 13 years ago when I was transitioning from the East coast to the West coast, I decided to use something and this will date me called Skype. And I was going to train via Skype because zoom wasn't there at that point in time. And so I was the first person to ever virtually train with Pilates. It was written up in the wall street journal. And you know what happened? Nobody wanted to do it because everyone was scared. It was new. They had never heard of it. And so then you fast forward now and everyone begs me for it. <laughs> so, right. And the coaching this way. And so, you know, the benefits are so amazing. Anytime, anywhere, doesn't matter where you are. You don't have to be on video. And, you know, and we're not today. We're, we're here very authentically audio. And I find, and you can tell me what you think. I feel that when you are in an audio atmosphere, whether that's coaching or being on a podcast, you will derive more from your podcast guest, from the host, from your coach. You yourself will be more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful about audio and audio is, is going to make a huge leap in this year in 2023. So that's a hint, hint for those of you out there looking to, to uh, fine tune your businesses. Audio is going to be so much bigger than it's ever been. And, you know, those benefits are huge. And then as far as my training virtually, I mean, that's amazing. I actually just trained a few uh, clients today who are on the other side of the United States. And I have personally have so much more flexibility with my schedule. I enjoy it more. 
I'm so happy. And then clients love it because they get me at all sorts of different hours that I wouldn't have necessarily worked had I been in studio. That's true. Because you've got commutes. Now you've got gas prices. Now you're away from your family. You know, now you're you're rushing from work. Now your weather is an impact. I mean, there the benefits are just endless to any sort of virtual coaching or training. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you you said audio because man, audio is it's like the person who's listening to the show, right? I mean, they're not, I mean, unless you put it on YouTube and they watch it, but I think audio is just, is a very easy tool, if you will, because if you think about it, phones were kind of popular, you know, calling, you know, home from school or, you know, calling friends on the phone, you know, growing up. I mean, you could see them, but you can call them. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I feel like with, with podcasting, but everyone has their little cup of tea. You know, I know mm-hmm. a lot of people who, who want to see the face and all that, but I like the audio too. Just uh, me personally speaking, I don't put words in anyone else's mouth, but it's like audio allows you to use your imagination too. You mm-hmm. know, you're, you're not so much distracted about, oh shoot, I hope I don't have a burger in my nose. Hope, you know, <laughs> I'll have a, you know, red forehead shining, you know, you, you, you take everything that's a distraction and disappears, you know, and a wise person told me before my show, you know, blew up. They said, when you zero in to the subject, that's, that's what creates the magic of your show. And it can be anything you talk about. You can be talking about rocks. You could be talking about rainbows. You can talk about the sky. You can talk about any subject, school, education, whatever it is, health. And that person that, that tunes in to your platform, Boom, they connect to what you have to offer. I want to say all that because I think it's leading to to everything we're talking about right now for your business and Pilates. It's that connection that you are able to create with the person on the other side. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And I just feel it's, it does, it takes out all of the static. And especially the last few years, I mean, honestly, we've had a lot of static around us and there's so much on social media platforms and there's like, people are just so overloaded and the audio is, it is soothing. It is almost meditative at times and it just brings more peace than anything. I find I adore it. I love it. See, I'm almost, I think we both are kind of spilling the sauce here on the show (laughs) because I'm about to get my little uh, sauce and uh, tricks, if you will. Like, don't judge me, y'all, but y'all getting the, the sauce right now. Sometimes an interview would be so cool if I can say that on my show. I'll literally just close my eyes because it's like, dang, the conversation is like, bing, 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 hitting everything that I think, whoa, whoa. Because sometimes you get too caught up in the script mm-hmm. that you end up, okay, I got to hurry up and get to this point. Or, man, I need to skip this one because you see what I'm saying? Like, we get too technical. Yes. And we're like... Okay, we start thinking about performing versus like just performing. It's like an athlete; they don't they don't think so much on like what they should be doing. They just know what needs to be done, and they take care of it. Mm-hmm. They're flowing; they're in alignment; they're in that moment. Boom! I didn't know he's about to have a session, man. But <laughs> when someone's listening right now, and going back to your business and your brand. Maybe this person themselves or entrepreneur or a business owner or in the process of turning their side hustle into becoming their full-time income based on your personal experience and everything you've been able to learn along your journey, being your own boss. What are some of the fundamental building blocks that they can practice so that they can put themselves in a better position later on this year? I would say... One of the number one things is to work on yourself because fulfillment is king. Success is great, but if you don't have inner fulfillment, if you're not taking care of yourself along the way, it means nothing at the end of the day. And I am so happy when I see the transformation with my clients and when I take the time to do the work, I just don't say, oh yes, like you should be training and you should see a mindset coach. And I do that. Everything that I do for clients, I do that for myself plus. And that is the key is to always work on yourself, to work on yourself more than you are working on your business. 
And now I know someone's going to go, oh, no, 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 no. And I'm going to tell you, please heed this advice. Work on yourself more because you are the ripple effect to everything around you personally and professionally. That's good. And right. And when you are on point, your business will automatically be on point. And I'll take it down even to a real generic, generic analogy. When you walk into someone's house and it's chaotic, generally that person has a dramatic life and there's always chaos going on. Same thing if you look at somebody's car and it's a mess and it's, ugh, right? Nothing is organized. Their thoughts aren't organized. Nothing is organized. You can look at someone's desk and know exactly what kind of worker they are based on how that desk works. Now, some people, I will say, thrive on chaos. And that may be okay for some. It is not healthy for 90% of the population though, especially again, when we get into the subconscious and we get into talking about the nervous system and wanting to be calm and flow in flow. And when, when I say flow, I mean, being in, just being in alignment. So one, work on yourself more than you work on your business. Two, what are you good at? And what do you really like to do? That's the part of your business I want you to work on. The other stuff you're going to hire people for. If you're not good in accounting, then you're going to get an accountant. And by the way, you should probably have one anyways in a business. Um, you know, have people to do the stuff that you either don't like to do, don't know how to do, or you just don't want to do it. That's key. And there are ways that you can barter. There are ways, there are websites out there that you can um, bring on help for fairly inexpensive. I mean, I, you're definitely talking to Frugal Fanny over here. So I am always looking to maneuver where can I, you know, always save a penny because that's important. I also learned many, many years ago in business that before I ever hired anyone to do anything, I would master that that position, that job, whatever I want someone else to do, because I want to know if you're coming to me and you're complaining about X, Y, and Z, I want to know about it. I wanted to have already experienced it so that I can have compassion so that I can help lead you through it. And that is super important. One, because you want to have all these skills and build these skills and have knowledge and awareness of your business. It is yours. And two, you really want to know at that point, you can really decipher too what you really like and what you don't like. Like a lot of people, podcasting is an easy example. A lot of people will just automatically hire out someone to do all their editing. And you can be charged a lot of money for that. You don't necessarily need that if you learn a few tricks of the trade. So it's it's all in what you love to do. That is what you should be doing and where your focus should be. While you, at the same time, are always feeding yourself, loving yourself, and building yourself up and working on yourself always a little bit more than you're working on your business so that you've got a really good balance of that body, mind, and spirit that will keep your energy up, keep you going, and always have this amazing vibration about you that you can just, you can be a little energizer bunny. If not, you're going to get burnt out really quick. And I'm sure you've been there. I've been there. I've done it. Because I just thought, oh my God, I'll just stay up all night and fix this website and do it. Well, that was silly because now I'm exhausted. Now I'm cranky and now I can't deal with clients the next day. It's a domino effect. And, it's a domino uh, effect. Yep. And I want to illustrate that real quick because it's a domino effect, whether it's good or bad. Because mm -hmm. you you mentioned about uh, like a ripple effect. And I immediately went there in my mind, like, you know, when you drop a rock in the pond or whatever, you see all these ripples, but they all came from that motion of that rock hitting the water. And I feel like that's who we are in our life, whether it's good or whether it's bad. You know, you want to understand the results. Just look where the time was spent and that'll tell you the story. of Because mm -hmm. someone on my show, I always got these smart, brilliant people on my show like you. Someone on my show was like, if you look at this person's life, you can see the choices behind it. I'm like, yo, you just hit me right in my forehead because that, that is so true. Because at the end of the day, you do have a choice whether you want to be better or you want to be bitter. It's up to you. No one can force you to stay where you are and no one can force you to go somewhere. Right. You yourself had to say, you know what? Boom, let's go. It's mm -hmm. up to you. And like you touched on, you got to be around those like-minded people that can help you level up, help you grow, help you mature, 
and just help you become you. The more you become your authentic you, the less you will get X, Y, and Z of a person and you actually get this person because you have to be yourself. You're your own fingerprint. I can't be Steph Curry and shoot basketball. I say that all the time as a reference, but it's true. I have to be me. If I can't play basketball, you know what? Let hell shine. <laughs> Stop competing mm-hmm. yourself with other, comparing yourself to other people and trying to compete. Compete with what you're good at is what I'm getting from you. Right. Definitely. And that goes back to a lot of also knowing your community and knowing where they are. You know, we've got all these social media platforms and I would say put on your horse blinders, meaning look straight ahead, stay in your lane. Exactly. Right. Not comparing. Don't look at anyone else. Stay in your lane. Do what feels good. And go where your people are, because a lot of times that I'm finding with the different uh, people that I'm coaching is they're doing something because the masses are doing it. And I've always been someone, I don't know about you. I've always been, if everyone else is doing it, if everyone else is going left, I'm going right. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to play over there. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to see what kind of gold I can have over here because there's too much, there's too much energy. There's too much static, right? You're not, you can't get seen. You can't, you're just there. But when you can really zone in on your people, your community, not what the world is doing, but where are your people and really hone in on that. And, and the key is to keep your mindset. You get to keep that mindset on point and not go down those rabbit holes that we often, we can get pulled down and it's it's knowing it's part of the process that's growth. But I always say, you know, when you've got those moments, it needs to be just like that a moment. Just because you spilled a glass of milk doesn't mean your whole day is soured. Keep or, it at the moment, right? Lift up and move on. And also doesn't mean you practice doing that because <laughs> it's, it's that routine again where you got to find out, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm in a funk and I just need to get over this. And because I had someone who just talked about, and I got to let you go, but I, I had someone that talked about don't let yourself be in a situation where all you do is let time pass you by. And we use these fillers, whether it's scrolling, the death scroll, social media, or if it's just watching, you know, something such on TV for hours and hours. We got to be careful to not allow ourselves to let something capture our time to where mm-hmm. we don't be productive. We are just passing it by. Right. We're imprisoning ourselves in all these little jail cells, so to speak, right? Everything is a square Man. The platforms, the phone. So you take yourself out of the jail today, stop the death scroll and start living and start empowering yourself. Man, someone needs to put that on a t-shirt. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> that's a good t-shirt right there. Once again, talking to Jennifer Pilates, you go to jenniferpilates.com. You also can check our podcast, Empowered uh, Within. It's called Empowered Within Podcast with Jennifer Pilates. You can check that out on the same website. Man, time flies by i felt like this was like three seconds ago but i want to say thank you for taking time talking on your focus radio thank you so much i'm honored to be a part of your show 